When I was at university in the late 1950s and early 1960s, I was very lucky that many of those who taught me and many of those who were my colleagues had fought in the First World War. One of those, J.R.R. Tolkien, told me his stories of the battles in which he had fought and the experiences which had influenced him for the rest of his life. Talking to veterans of the First World War in my Churchill work, meeting those who had been soldiers with him on the Western Front when he was in the trenches, made me determined to write something about the war. Not only the battles of the war, but also the fate of civilians behind the lines, and to try to put the war in its context. How did it begin? What were the causes of the war? And as it evolved, what were the different facets of the war? The war on land, the war at sea, the war in the air. The First World War was the first war in which aerial battles took place. And to try to tell the story of all the war fronts and all the war combatants, not from a British perspective, but from a global perspective. I also, as I do in all my books, try to draw maps so that every place mentioned in the book, however obscure, however small, however tiny, however hard to find on an atlas, is mapped in one of my specially drawn maps. The history of the First World War is a human story, and I focused on the experience of individuals. And I interleave the historical narrative with the texts of poems written by soldiers, many of whom were killed shortly after they wrote the poem which I reproduce. It's a very human story, a tragic story. It was the war to end war, and yet it failed to do so. In this book I also have an aftermath section, showing what happened after the war, what happened to the frontiers, and what happened to the people who had fought in it. The story of the legacy of the war, in all its sombre reflections.